Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over an upcoming pattern change for much of the United States. Many areas are going to be experiencing some colder weather as we go through the month of January, and especially into later January, that's when we're really going to get into some of that colder air. Tomorrow's video will probably be about that snowstorm down in the southern states uh, that's going to be eventually moving up the east coast. We're going to be talking about that later on in the video a little bit, and we're also going to be talking about that uh, in tomorrow's video a lot more, and mainly what we're going to be talking about in today's video is going to be that longer term pattern really breaking down why we're going into a colder pattern and what could be leading to that so it's going to be more of an in-depth video uh, and this is going to be kind of like one of those pattern change videos that I make every once in a while uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what could be happening uh, and we're going to be explaining everything uh, with regarding the pattern and hopefully you guys get a better idea of what you should expect going into the later parts of January so Starting off, here's the National Weather Service page with all the watches and warnings. We have some winter weather advisories in Montana as well as Oregon and California. And then we have some more winter weather advisories uh, in the purple for Arkansas and Missouri as well as some more winter storm warnings for Arkansas, uh, North Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee, and into Virginia as well as some more winter weather advisories for Virginia, North Carolina, and Tennessee. And some winter storm watches for North Carolina there. So other than that, there's not a lot of watches and warnings currently uh, but let's start talking about that pattern and the actual temperatures that we could be dealing with uh, with this uh, with this pattern so here's what the climate prediction center is showing for their six to ten day outlook from the 12th to the 16th here's the temperatures uh, and they're showing a lot of warmer air over the northern u.s and cold and warmer air also for the western u.s and then colder air further uh to the south there and that's actually uh, pretty accurate with what I think will happen. I think for the first half of the month, again, it is going to be warmer for the northern and western part of the U.S. It should stay colder, though, for the southern U.S., but I disagree with them when they show on the 8 to 14 day outlook still some of that warmer air lingering into the northern U.S. I think by that point, this is when the polar vortex is going to start to come down, and we're going to start to see a little bit more cold air uh, spill into there. So I disagree with them on the 8 to 14 day outlook, but I do agree with them with that 6 to 10 day outlook. I do think However, that that uh, warmer air will stay further to the west, and I think you will start to actually get some sort of a ridge to start to actually build into much of the uh, much of the western United States, and that should bring up a lot more warmer air to those areas. So let's start talking about something that I've been mentioning quite a bit on my channel. If you watched one of these pattern change videos before, uh, and it's the 10 millibar GEFS uh, heights, and we're actually going to go through the GFS on this, uh, but this is the ensemble uh, 10 millibar height, and this is showing you what our current polar vortex looks like uh, and you might have heard that the polar vortex split it did split for a while one went into central Canada the other one went into Europe and for a while you did have some colder air there it did come back together but we are expecting this to split once again into uh, the eastern US and then also into western Europe there and that's going to be when you're actually going to start to see a lot more of that colder air so this is what it looks like right now and here is what your temperatures look like two weeks from now. Uh, and usually I do say this is about a two-week indicator. So you have to take whatever you're seeing on the 10 millibar heights and then translate that two weeks into the future. And you can see what that pattern would look like. You would see a lot of that colder air into Europe and then another area of colder air into the United States. And that's what you would actually see on the surface two weeks later. So this would be by January 21st. So we should start to get the impacts of this right around the 15th through 20th, uh, which actually adds up with with what I said in, uh, on my December forecast, I did on my January forecast, I said the colder temperatures are probably going to wait until about the 15th through 20th, and that's when they're actually going to start to come down into the United States. And now we're seeing this polar vortex probably, uh, again, right around that time frame, bring some of that colder uh, air. Now here would be uh, what the GFS is showing for this in the future, and just going through that, that forecast, we're looking at uh, that polar vortex in the blue right here, and then here's some of your ridging that's up near Alaska and then we have a little bit more warming uh, back through into Asia there and that's what we're dealing with some of that warmer air pushing that polar vortex further to the south uh, and further into Europe and also into North America 
And that's actually going to be really, really important because without this, we wouldn't have any polar vortex split because there wouldn't be anything to push this further to the south. And because of that uh, warming event, and you're going to see that warm air really expand over parts of Russia uh, and Asia there, uh, where you're going to be dealing with some of that warmer air, you're going to see that expand. And that's going to, again, allow some of that to head further to the south. Uh, and you really want to pay attention for really this area right here. That's what is going to be most important when you watch this. So here would be by the 13th and you see that area of warm air expands and it gets even uh, warmer. And by this point, this is the first point when you see the polar vortex split. This is by the 14th. We see uh, colder air into uh, just south of Greenland. And then we see that the second polar vortex split into Russia there. So these are your two vo polar vortexes. This one's going to move south into the United States. This one's going to move south into Europe there. Uh, and let's watch the progress of these two. So you start to see that this this one starts to head, uh, both of them start to head further south, but the one in Europe and Asia starts to move further to the east. This one, uh, further uh, in closer to North America, does start to move south. They do somehow uh, kind of merge together right around the 18th again, but we are generally dealing with some sort of a colder pattern. So the GFS does bring that second polar vortex further uh, to the north. It kind of pushes it further uh, north with that other polar vortex. They, uh, they kind of converge again over Europe. And then you start to see that the full polar vortex, both of them merged together, does dip down near the United States, and you do see a general uh, shape of troughing through much of the United States, and especially the eastern United States, where you have some of that blue popping up. That's where you're looking at some of those colder temperatures for some of those areas. Now, Here's just a GIF of the uh, of the next uh, few days on the European model, and just kind of a loop of all of the uh, all of the uh, kind of frames from this model, and just giving you a general idea of what could happen. Uh, you do see that we do have numerous storms uh, that are bringing snow and rain and mixed precipitation through much of this area, especially. I think this is going to be your bullseye zone uh, for snowfall. You're going to have a lot of these systems kind of go from the Rockies down into uh, some of these southern states and then back through up the east coast so this is a favorable pattern especially if you live anywhere uh, throughout this region and you can see how most of those storms do track within that region but I think if you live within this region I think it's going to be exceptionally dry over the next few days you're going to have that polar vortex come down bring in some very cold air but with cold air you also get drier air and that's also going to limit any sort of snow or rain that you might get I think any sort of precipitation that you guys are going to be very very limited over the next about four 14 uh, to 15 days or so. So here's what the GFS is showing, just looping the GFS uh, to give you a good idea of what that's showing. So uh, we do see that same storm come out of the Rockies, moves up the East Coast. It doesn't show as much snow for those areas, but you continue to see a couple more storms move through those areas, and you keep on seeing a general trend of storminess along with some of that colder air, and that's a pretty good recipe for some snowy activity over the next few days. And then here's what the uh, Canadian model is showing, and it's showing pretty much a similar pattern. You see that system come out of uh, the Rockies through the southern states up the east coast and then after that you get into a very cold pattern and you see even a couple more storms try to kind of move up the east coast uh, and that just kind of signals towards that general pattern of storminess that we're going to be going through over the next few days. Now here's that total snowfall map from all of those and not really something that's not really important is the actual amount so it's not important that some of these areas are seeing six or eight inches of snowfall but look at where the snowfall is generally and it's through that corridor where you're going to see those storms line up further to the south and that's where you're going to see the bulk of your snowfall over the next 10 to 14 days here's what the uh this is what the canadian model is showing and it's showing pretty much that same area getting hit with a lot of snowfall from that one storm and then here's the next uh model and here's the gfs model and you see it really doesn't do too much with that uh east coast storm but it really does bring another system further to the south and it brings more snow for those areas. So either way, you're going to be dealing with some sort of a colder and a snowier pattern. Uh, no matter what really happens with each of these individual storms, we're going to be in a colder pattern. And with all the storminess that we could be seeing uh, with an active jet stream, we could definitely see quite a bit of snowfall uh, move through a lot of these areas. 
Now, here's something that's really important is that the La Nina, which is kind of that area that I shaded in red here, that's really weak. And we started the winter off and we were thinking it's going to be a really warm winter uh, for many of these areas because uh, you're going to see the very strong La Nina. Uh, and that really dissipated. We're going into more of a weaker or a moderate La Nina. So we're not really seeing too many of the effects of a regular strong La Nina. And you can see how there really isn't too much cold air uh, over where you would typically see a La Nina you do have a general area of colder air but it's only uh, maybe a degree or two celsius below normal it's not the three or four or even five degrees below normal celsius that we were seeing uh, earlier in the year and i think that really helps uh, when you're looking at a colder pattern because la nina is usually cut off that southern jet stream you usually don't see any activity move through the southern states and, mo and mostly that jet stream kind of stays like this uh, we really didn't see that and we're actually seeing more of an el nino or an enzo neutral type pattern and that's mainly because the La Nina is fairly weak by this point and it's not really driving the pattern too much. Also we do have a general area of uh, warmer temperatures out near Hawaii and off of the west coast and that's also allowing to build some ridging and when you get ridging out in the west you get troughing out in the east and that's also something that has helped uh, this winter with uh, some of that uh, some of that snowfall. Now here's what the teleconnections are showing and this is basically just showing you uh, where uh, certain geographic areas and showing you whether they're going to be uh, seeing ridging or troughing throughout those regions. Uh, and you can see, starting off with the Arctic Oscillation, we are going to be having a very unsettled Arctic. Uh, and this has been very, very below uh, the standards. And we're looking at maybe three or even four degrees or uh, two to three uh, standard deviations below the average. And we're looking at that uh, most likely staying uh, negative, And we're not really looking at this even nearing neutral and then it goes back fairly negative right around the 15th watch out for some sort of storm around this time period and then it goes back up closer to the neutral line although it is still fairly negative uh, so with a negative AL you are still dealing with colder temperatures usually for the eastern US here's what the uh, EPO is showing and you usually want this to be closer to uh, uh, to neutral or you even want this to be negative uh, you really don't want this to be skyrocketing above normal uh, and we have seen that, and that's when we actually went into that mild period. So you can actually directly correlate the East Pacific Oscillation with the uh, temperature patterns that we've seen right around the 1st of January when we started to go into that uh, into that warmer period for a lot of areas. You saw that EPO go very, very positive, and now it's kind of plateaued, and then it's starting to go negative, and it's expected to, uh, to go uh, closer to the neutral line, although it will stay positive most likely uh, as long as it's closer to that neutral line within about two standard deviations of the mean uh, you will start to go into a bit of a colder pattern usually for much of the eastern and central u.s and then Here's what the NAO is showing because this is also important. The North Atlantic Oscillation it is very negative right now. Although if you have a if you have too negative of a NAO, you can actually drive those storms into the Mid Atlantic and into the Southern states. So it can actually kind of uh, kind of be too strong where it drives those storms too far to the south. So it's going to regulate closer to the average and maybe just uh, one or two standard deviations but below the average. So you will start to go into more of a uh, below normal and a negative NAO, although it's not going to be so negative that these storms are going way to the south. So if you live further to the north, that might be a good thing. If you live further to the south, you might want this to be, uh, you know, super negative where you would be driving these storms very, very far to the south. And then here's that PNA, and you always want this to be positive uh, if you uh, like cold and snow over the eastern United States, and that is going to stay positive. No real indication that it's going to go even close to the neutral line uh, anytime soon. And it's it's pretty much stayed positive the entire winter with the exception of this time period right here when it dipped slightly uh, below the average line and then here are the uh, the areas that all of these uh, these uh, teleconnections cover the PNA is over the western US and western North North America the EPO is over the northern Pacific basically from Hawaii northward the AO is over the Arctic of course and then the NAO is southeast of Greenland and over uh, pretty much in the northern Atlantic there and that's where that covers you want the AO to be negative if you want snow cold in the eastern United States you want the NAO to also be negative the PNA to be positive and the EPO 
Scorpio to be close to neutral or, or negative. Uh, and if you want cold and snow in the western U.S., you want negative PNA, negative EPO. Uh, you want a uh, negative. Uh, you want a. I believe. I believe you do want a negative AO and then also a positive NAO there. If you do want cold and snow in the western United States. So uh, right now the teleconnections are favoring more of a, a eastern United States colder pattern. Although of course these things could change, uh, and I'll definitely be updating you guys as we get more information. So that is going to wrap it up for today's video. Please consider liking the video, subscribing, and turning on notifications. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.